<laughs> we, we talking about morality again? <laughs> so, uh, you no, search no, around. No, no, just, a quip, just a quip. <laughs> <laughs> you search around. You do not find any wires or anything like that. Um, you do see that, uh, basically, you notice this room is stiflingly hot. Um, and there is, like, a window, although it's uh, basically, there's like a big window, but it's closed up for some reason, which is one of the reasons why the room is so stuffy. Uh, other than that, you don't mm-hmm. find anything really out of the ordinary, although you do notice that there seems to be like a pile of different uh, pictures underneath the bed. Pictures of what? Uh, probably his paintings. Yeah, paintings. paintings. Presumably. Uh, oh. Not like porno pictures under the bed. So, so you know, this isn't boxy. <laughs> this, this dude's a vampire. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I explained some window. Uh, like, it's like not working. Yeah, I don't know why Discord did that. It doesn't matter. Are they there? Yeah, I mean, people are here. Hello. 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 Yeah. What's going on? Like everybody just went silent. The screen went black. Oh, I'm right here. Okay. Come round, round. I am also here. All right. Um, where was I? Yeah. So. Okay. So, um, so he has not yet arrived. Well, he's in the bathroom. It seems. That's He's getting washed off. Well, I will go and I will sit on the bed and make myself comfortable as he. All right. Intended. How about the rest as of you? As he said. Uh, I mean, I'll just stand on alert, ready to dread gaze him as he comes. In. Stand okay. awkwardly <laughs> next to Tioma, who is also standing awkwardly. Uh, yeah, there's not really. Uh, you guys can both squeeze yourselves into the apartment, but it would be more comfortable if one of you stayed outside the door. Okay. Stalworth, which would you rather? If you guys sucked in your guts, you can both make it in there, but you are basically having to hold yourselves again away from one another. I'm reclining over there. Uh, well, I'm sure uh, Aliosha can uh, guard the door. All right. Alright. I'll do that then. I'm gonna get my ass kicked by those kids. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Kick his ass! Alright. <laughs> so. Uh, they're, Amer- they're American kids, they're alarmed. After, it's very uh, true. <laughs> after a moment, uh, the bathroom door opens and uh, a shirtless uh, Tito. Uh, steps out as carefully as he can. Uh, you can see that his hair is still like dripping wet, and uh, he says, "Oh, you've uh, brought friends with you." Oh no, he's hot. Oh, of course he is. He's a Toreador. <clears throat> um. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Was that inappropriate? No, of course not. And then uh, he gets under. He basically has you like move to the side, and he gets under the bed uh, as much as he can. And then he starts pulling out pieces. He says, well, this is what I have to show you. And uh, he starts making uh, Tioma, like, hold up. (laughs) (laughs) You're the easel. I like it. Paintings. Uh, So you can see there's a lot of... um, well, give me a uh, intelligence plus academics. All right. Turns out you don't know anything about art. <laughs> I don't. I do not know anything about art. I was just being polite. Are there any landscapes? Uh, yes, there are a series of very boring-looking landscapes. Uh, it's very... So it's not Bob Ross or Happy Little Trees or anything? It's just kind of like uninteresting uh, landscapes. And then... He holds up one where he says, this is a portrait uh, that I did of Mina. And then you can see the portrait, and it's of uh, Mina playing uh, as a nude uh, full length. 
uh, obfuscated nude or her tentacle no. nude? Her nude. Her tentacle nude. Okay. Her, t- her slimy tentacle nude. And as oh. you're looking at it, mm-hmm. you find yourself mm-hmm. fascinated by the work that went into it. It, it seems, despite uh, her, obviously you had found her somewhat disgusting previously, but looking no, in, you can beautiful. find there is a depth of character and beauty to her you did not know. Um, okay. And within a few moments, the other two of you kind of notice uh, that uh, Natasha is just out of it, just staring at this picture. Is this had to do with a uh, clan weakness? Probably, yes. <laughs> no, it's just not good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not no, no, you look at the painting and see what you think. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I will look yeah, at the painting. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a sec. Just to be clear, which one of you is uh, looking at it true. first? Or are you both looking I'll at look it simultaneously? At it. Uh, Star Wars? I'm in the room, so I'll take a yeah, look you at should it. look at it. <laughs> All right. So it will be... Just Lex say for this. <laughs> <Yeah. So is laughs> We're going to be staring at a painting. He's going to be outside being beaten so by children. Is the painting the same thing or is it? All right. So. Fun night. All right. So just looking at it, um, you don't uh, see anything too special about it, although you could examine it more closely if you used your auspects. Don't do that. <laughs> what? Could be the negative consequences of that. I mean, well, so there, was time, <laughs> there was this one time. There was there was this one time when Mary there on someone suspicious, and they were so powerful that <laughs> Mary's character like got a huge migraine and like collapsed onto the ground, which was like seizing. <laughs> what, oh, what this, is this is just a painting. This isn't Lilith. It could be very powerful painting. I thought she was going to say something it's like she scratched her really eyes out or something. Well, it, well, I think I was like blinded, blinded or something yeah. for, yeah, for a while. Oh, Temporarily. You weren't permanently blinded until blind. you looked at God. Until I looked at God. Dragomir made a series of mm-hmm. bad looking mistakes. <laughs> Svezan was one of them. Ha. A bad looking mistake. Mm-hmm. Get it? Yeah. Because Svezan had one appearance at the start of the game. <laughs> but ended with two. Dragomir and Fesnay were both just ugly fucks. It was, it was just kind of bad. Now, Dragomir and Svezdan, it's a weird couple. Anyway, well, so... Just all 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 <laughs> yeah. So we're all specs in this bitch? Sure, let's all specs. Yep. Alright, perception Why? plus empathy. That is a 19. 19. Okay. And uh, two specialties and the acute sense. You know, and all there's that. no actual reason to do this, right? <laughs> yep. We well, know. I mean, if something right. negative happens, then it'll just make things more interesting. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's an awful way to think about this game. Come on. Something's gonna happen. The other way. You should to be think- acting in character. Well, in character, he has no reason to suspect that this would have any reason to be bad. Well, he just saw that Mary's character's freaking out at it. She's not freaking out. No, I mean, oh, raptured, like, raptured. like Toreador tend to do. Exactly. So, you start to look so at what, it. you want to get ruptured as well? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it sounds good, raptured, you know. Mm-hmm. No, he's paranoid. All right, Alexa, it's going to be up to you, You though. start to examine. <laughs> you start to examine I don't the want work. it to be up to me. And you can see there's something more to it. You can feel wow. like a psychic imprint uh, of Mina on the work, like it's suffused into it. Um, and as you're like looking at it, you find like the aura rating rating off it absolutely beautiful. And it does. You're not clan weakness enraptured, but you are just sort of enthralled by it as you begin to. Just Mace. feel the psychic emanations washing over you. Shop. Both of you find oh, it a very pleasant experience. It is. It's beautiful. Would, would Tito part with it? <laughs> well, we're not to that. Yeah, yet. okay. <laughs> you two are still incapacitated. <laughs> Alexei. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the painting, Alexa. Look at the painting. I dread, I dread gaze the painting. <laughs> <laughs> this 
painting is the final boss. I like the idea that Alexei's just giving everything the evil eye. Just, you know, Dread Days also involves you, like, hissing at them and yeah, stuff, like, exactly. baring your fangs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Pretty dumb. Alright, so, I mean, like, if I'm guarding, I'm probably looking the other way. Yeah. So do I notice anything other than people other not than talking? It quiet. Well, you, yeah, it does just kind of go quiet. So you're, like, sort of... I mean, you're in a position where you can't kind of see inside, too. Um, yeah, I'll turn around and look inside. Do I notice the two of them staring? Staring at like yeah, They seem to be both be just absolutely enthralled by one of the paintings. And is Nina out in the room as well yet? Uh, Tito. Tito. Tito, is, sorry. Yeah, Tito is I thought I heard Nina well. for some reason. The painting is a We're staring at, at, Nina oh. naked, at Nina naked. The tentacle so, version. Yeah. Yeah. It so is. there's a picture. So there's a painting of Nina naked. Yes. And she's got tentacles. Well, yeah, well, she's Nina a slimy does, yeah. tentacle Nosferatu person. I didn't realize she had tentacles. I thought oh, she yeah, just she had slime. Tentacles. Yeah, she's sort of. And a, this Nina girl is getting better and better. So she's like kind of half. She has like yeah, kind of squiddy tentacle limbs. This is literally out of Monster Musume or some shit. <laughs> oh, I say it's like, I want to see this shit. <laughs> Naked? With tentacles? And slime. That's hot. <laughs> oh, that's hot. <laughs> anyway, from where Yoma is sitting, unfortunately, you can't see the painting. He's like, has it at, he's looking down at it, and then he has, he's holding it towards the bed on the opposite side of the room. So where? I'll be like, uh, comrades? <laughs> Um, and there's no response from any of the three of them. They all seem enthralled. Even Tito? Even Tito. Well, I suppose he loves the woman. It makes sense for him to be enthralled. Well, I will step inside and tap. Uh, who is closest to me? Stalworth? Uh, it would be Stalworth, yes. I'm sorry. I should learn the character's name. Stalworth, what's her character's name again? Uh, Artyom. Artyom, right. And Mary, what are you again? I am Natalia. Natalia, okay, I'm sorry. So Artyom and Natalia. I will. I presume Artyom is closest. Yeah. So I will tap him on the shoulder, be like, yo, Artyom. Um, do I come to uh, my senses? Well, you do feel like there is a something happening mm -hmm. in the distance, but you're pretty enthralled by it. You're aware that something has happened, but you're not actually breaking out of it. And yeah, so and they are tentacles. They are so beautiful. I'll grab his shoulder and shake it. <laughs> so once you get like really kind of rough, eventually, yes, that does bring you out of it. All right. Well, do I understand what just happened? Uh, basically, you were looking at this. There's some. There is an actual beyond just regular painting, there is some sort of psychic imprint on this painting. It's not just a usual something that someone painted. I see. Well, I will make sure to avoid any eye contact with the painting, and I'll take it out of Tito's hands, and I'll, I'll well, place it. Right I'm saving this for later. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just place it, like, face down somewhere. All right. Man, when new grounds gets invented, <laughs> this is going up there. Yeah, nothing about the experience was unpleasant um, for either of you, but as you put it away, both of the other two do kind of come to their senses. Good. And uh, I'll ask Tito, so uh, what's up with the painting? How much? <laughs> uh, he says, yes, that was the work... Uh, that I did uh, for Mina when we first met. I see. And uh, okay, out of character, is there like some power to let you paint something and have like a soul bond with it or some? That is definitely not a standard power. <laughs> it is not a standard power, no. But there are uh, advanced powers uh, for some disciplines that may allow that. Yes. And this isn't something that would just happen by happenstance. Like, this would have to... Something this, would have to be... Pure coincidence. This is uh, a sign of something very odd. You don't think this could happen by accident. No, someone intended this to happen. 
open. I see. Neo is supposedly a neonate, so he wouldn't have like <laughs> you wouldn't expect him to have a neonate. <laughs> but Mina is a Nosferatu. Hmm. Which she may have some sort of because we know the Nosferatu are having an issue, right? With mm-hmm. play, and we don't know. We don't know how they're all connected. Nosferatu on spirit. So, is it coming from Mina being painted, or is it from Tito painting? Is Tito a Toreador? Does he have other portraits? Uh, Tito is a Toreador. He does have right. some other portraits. Uh, and they also have this psychic. He says. Um, however, uh, most of the portrait he doesn't like. He tells you, uh, I don't really like to do portraits. Um, so they're all by commission uh, for other kindred in the city. Hmm. And Mina didn't want hers? Uh, well, I have several of Mina. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I guess may, <laughs> may um, Alyosha look at some of these other Mina uh, portraits? Uh, so looking through some of the other uh, portraits... Uh, you do see there are a couple more of Mina. Um, there is not none of them are as striking as the full nude one, the full nude. but there are some. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, mostly dressed. Uh, although there are some of just like you know, face. It's, things. Are like you that. telling me slime titties are a vampire catalyst? Um, and you Absolutely. do feel a sort of psychic emanation from all of them. None of them are nearly as strong as that first one, but there does seem. And you just kind of analyzing. Does anyone have uh, a good intelligence plus academics in the three of you? Nope. Five. All right. <laughs> the cultured one. <laughs> a man of culture, indeed. Steal. Exactly. He should know what to I'm steal. such a man of culture. Let me analyze this tentacle. <laughs> All right. So you're looking at it, and it does seem like the work he does in portrait, he seems to be a much better portrait artist than a landscape artist. Um, Just Mm. his technique, everything about it looks superior. I see. Interesting that he doesn't do portraits very often, then. It's almost as if you should ask him about that. Yeah, I was going to say, why don't you... My friend, (laughs) I noticed that your portraits have quite a lot of skill and effort put into them. I wonder why you don't usually do them. Says, uh, I find the, uh, the portrait, uh, making very, uh, exhausting, which is why I don't do it often. Oh, I see. Well, it, sh- it shows that you put a lot of work. I am, uh, glad you think so. Do you uh, care to buy anything? I look at the other two. <laughs> I don't have any money. They're, they're the money folk. Oh, how much money do we have? Uh, well, let's see. You haven't actually bought... You have $10,000 right now, although you're planning mm. on using some of it for the office. <laughs> I'll offer you $10,000 for the naked <laughs> phone. <laughs> so, Seriously? Um... Well, so, I, do we really want one of the Mina portraits if it's like... I mean, I, I know to you, you're the one who's interested. But it's like, do we really want one of them if, we're, if they're, like, creepy weird? I mean, the enrapturing is a very pleasurable process. So, Toreador will often choose to subject themselves to art that okay. leaves them enraptured. So, yes. So, I will be like, yes, I would like one of the Mina portraits. Uh, maybe... Maybe we should be saving our money. <laughs> How much does he want for the portrait? Well, we Jesus. can do a little... <laughs> lady needs a portrait. We're going to get a portrait. <laughs> give me a manipulation plus finances. Well, I have four manipulation. All right, I'll roll four dice. Four dice then. <laughs> All right. Oh, I've got finance. You managed to come yeah, you to... Want portrait, do you? He's not willing to sell the first the first Mina portrait at any price, but he is willing to sell you one of the other uh, smaller ones for $100. It's not the same. $100? Yeah. 
That ain't that bad. Yeah, but she's not naked, she's though. Fun. You can get one that's just of her face where you kind of see, like, a hint of bosom that kind of implies that maybe below the portrait she's naked. Mmm. Tantalizing. Well, Titillation. Well, I'm going to do the one that most enraptures me besides the fold. All right. That's the one. All right. Yeah, you get, a like, a close-up of her face. Okay. You realize you're just basically putting Hypnotoad in our apartment, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, that was my metagame. I was like, do we actually want to do this? But then he's like, yes, Toriador would do this. So I was like, okay. <laughs> That's why Toriador are obsessed with art, is because they like getting enraptured like that. So, uh, so yeah, we're uh, yeah, no porn in our, uh, in our apartment. I'll, uh, I want to ask uh, Tito one or two questions. All right. So, so Tito, uh, how long do you say you've known Mina for? Oh, at this point, uh, a couple of years, I guess. Uh, do you know much about her background before you met? Says, well, I mean, it's impolite to talk about a woman behind her back, of course. Very true. Very true. I see. I see. Well, if you had to pull out, I, I, you know, I'm sure I've already wrote Tito the wrong way. I, I don't want to make an enemy out of him. Yeah. All right. He does say, uh, "I know. Uh, I can tell you that she has had a very hard life." And that is definitely, from the psychic impressions you got of the uh, portrait, you definitely feel that that is true. I see. I see. Well, Tito, you provided some valuable information. I appreciate it. I don't mean to be too forward, but it seems as though you have an interest in Mina. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tito. 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 And I, I, I. So I do feel it would be appropriate for me to inform you that we do have an open relationship. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. I okay, did, did not see that coming. I am amused. I'm looking at Tio. I was going to try and jump in and help him out because I thought that was going to go differently, but I'll just be like. <laughs> Somewhere, Ooh, nice. somewhere, somehow, Zima breathes a sigh of relief, but he doesn't know why. <laughs> now, this is very interesting because, like, a Mina girl is so quiet. It would be very interesting if she was the one who wanted it to be open. <laughs> <laughs> he says, if any of you would be uh, interested uh, in pursuing there. a closer relationship with her, you should not feel in any way discouraged from doing so. Since she came to the city, I have been trying to heal the emotional wounds she carries to teach her to love. And if any of you feel that you can assist in that, I would strongly encourage you to approach her. Well, Tito, that's very uh, admirable of you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I really hope that that would be in character under your mind. <laughs> Anyway, um, are we still um, worth you going to focus long, girl? I will. Uh, <laughs> my favorite part he's is go, that I he's wrote all try. This well before you guys even started mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'd have to uh, consult with Natasha about that. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I mean, you guys could do like a group thing, all four of you. Oh no! Oh, well, three and a half. <laughs> might be interested. I'll just anyway, watch. I will graciously. Uh, the KGB team is here to assist you, man. <laughs> oh, it's time for the KGB to spread love. Oh my! I knew that would be So boy, thank you, Tito, for the portraits and for your generous offer. And I am sure that Nina is in very good hands with you. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> All right. Well. He gives a bow with a flourish. 
here in the little room. Anyway, I'm looking at Alexei, who's closest to the door. We have to file out single file. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alexei has to leave. So first. Natasha has out. body language that says it's time to leave now. I walk out. All right. You guys do like a little train <laughs> yeah, out. Do a little train out. All right. And uh, as you guys step down from the uh, enclosed upper staircase, uh, you can see that the kids are watching you as you leave. In a creepy way? Um, well, it is the middle of the night, and they are in, like, a darkened, like, old uh, apartment building, like, looking at you from around the corner. So it, is, it could be considered creepy. We forgot to ask the kids what's up with the kids. Well, you know, we can ask the kids what's up with the kids. Yeah, Let's go approach the kids. You Here, you're not playing this. You're. I, I don't know if you're playing this paranoia thing. Pro <laughs> <laughs> the Would you bang this woman? <laughs> Dread gaze the children. Dread gaze the children. I. No, I will. I yeah. will walk over and. Hey kids, them. look at this. <laughs> All right. Well, as soon as you acknowledge them, they turn around and run off. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sure we can ask Tito about that next time we come over. Like, next time. Children in your apartment. No, Starworth, you should storm right back to this room. Be like, what the hell? And ask, up hey, <laughs> what's up with the kids? Nah, I plan on, uh, I plan on getting a group portrait of us in the office. <laughs> well, so I'll, 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 I'll commission Tito Nina, to make it. Naked in front of his you're all laps. holding, you're all yeah. holding Nina. <laughs> Where else she's like, just naked splayed across our laps. <laughs> Tentacles around our heads. <laughs> it's just we're all entwined. Strangle me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure she she could do it. she probably would. Oh yeah, not sure I do have potence. Do you know yeah. how oh, much an goodness. octopus with potence could like squeeze the life out of you? You are seriously talking some good, yes. some good orgasm there. <laughs> That's true. Yes. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> Anyway. We'll go quickly over to the other, the non-KGB team. The non-freaks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't team, know if you can call us that. Team KGB <laughs> and team watched by the KGB. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys contacted uh, the Three Star Cab Company, which drove you out, uh, way out of the city, into the Everglades. And you guys are on a road... And uh, you're just kind of looking around, and it's turned into kind of, not exactly farms, but like rural houses out in the swamps. Um, and then you can see there hasn't been any like road signs or anything for a while. And then one does pop up, which informs you that pavement ends one mile ahead. Huh. And uh, you continue going, and then about one mile ahead, you feel the road turn into gravel. And then All right. you keep going, and then finally uh, the car stops. And you hear the faint sound of banjos on the wind. Um, hmm. What do you want? To, what do you want to do? I don't know. Not much can right we, now. Can we see a um, any houses anywhere or any? Can we see any? Like, what can we see? Uh, you look around. Um, you're basically in the middle of a swamp right now. Um, you can see that the road does kind of go on a little ways, and then it's just lost in the trees. Uh, in the dark, uh, neither of you have Auspex or Protean, I don't think. Nope. Uh, yeah, so you have, find it... I have, bring a a flashlight. I have acute sense of the sight, if that works. All right, well, yeah, so you can see that the road starts twisting around, um, and it also turns into dirt at this point. Um, Shall we go? Sure. Very nice. Well, let's go. Remind me again why we're here, because I've completely forgotten, honestly. So we went into the sewers, and we were attacked by all manner of scary creatures, including a uh, giant gal. You nearly got got by an alligator, despite being angry at me for banging on a pipe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we found a Zimitsi. Or did we know he were he was the Zimitsi or? It was quite clear. We were told he was a Mitsu, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with like a massive, enlarged head. I think he was like attached to the ceiling as well. Um, who controlled the animals. He told us, he looked at my arm 
Well, first he stripped that too. I just, then he just my how, how we got here specifically. I don't remember. Did he refer us here? The yeah, he, 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 which he then said, there's a man out in the swamp. Go here. Yeah, okay, you gotcha. have a letter of introduction for him now written on uh, parched human flesh. Gotcha. Was it was it not my human flesh? No, it wasn't. It was some. No. It was some he had on hand, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Then. Let's. Uh, right, shall let's we head going then? All righty. All right. You guys get out of the taxi, uh, pay your fare, and uh, the taxi driver says good luck. And then he. How how, how much is the fare? Um, it's a few hundred dollars. Oh God. Did um, we did he... we agree on the price last week or? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I I, I did think like because uh, me and. I remember we got quite a bit of money for the uh, for some of the doubloons. Like, yeah, we still yeah. got a good chunk. But... Yeah, you got enough cash for it. All right, good, good, good. So once he wishes you good luck, you see him back up, do like a couple point turn, uh, and then start driving back down the gravel road towards the city. Wait. Can I kind of tell you? Wait, no, come back. We need someone to drive us back when we get back here. So if you call after him, he says, I mean, I can stay around, but you know the meter is going to keep running. What do you think, Yuri? You have the money. It is your call. We both have money, Yuri. I'm not stupid. Got him. We, in terms of liquid cash, we both do have about the same amount of money. I don't have anything, mate. What? What have you been spending your money on? <laughs> what? No, hold on. What money do you think I have? The money we sold the gold for. I gave you half. You gave me? Oh, you gave me half. I didn't know that. I thought you took it all. No! <laughs> Is this happening in character? <laughs> half, apparently. <laughs> you, no, you, you said you were going you to way, give me half. <laughs> you are way too nice to me. You shouldn't do that. I'll, I'll accept it, though. Gladly. <laughs> you, you, I think you've, you've already got half. Like, I, <laughs> okay. The implication I thought was that you, we both paid one half of the fare. Which is why I think I still have money left over. How, so I'll ask, I'll ask the driver. How much would it be uh, if we are gone for three, four hours? Uh, well, he you know, kind of tallies up the time. Um, you might just be able to pay if you get back uh, around yeah, three or four hours. You might just have enough cash on hand. Because he's also going to have to drive you all the way back into Miami, too. Yeah, no, I mean, that was like, kind of implied. It's like, and the wait. Yeah. Um, okay. There is still the matter of our debt we must pay. I don't believe we can afford that. Uh, maybe not. Maybe you can't, Mister. Oh, I don't have any money on me. <laughs> Shit. He says, right. "Well, I'll tell you what. I can't exactly just stay out here hoping you'll come back." Uh, no, this is true. So, if you give me the cash you have right now, I'll stay long enough up until the point where you run over uh, where you can afford to get back to Miami. And if at that point you're not here, then I take off with everything. If you are here, take you back. It, it, does he seem possessed, or is I mean, he he must know. We are is not it, agreeing it, to this deal. No, no, I don't think so. Don't do it. That's a terrible uh, idea. Yeah, no. Uh, apologies, friend. We cannot accept that deal. Please. Says, Fair enough. Have a good night. Good luck. And then he drives away. All right. Well, nowhere to go but forward. I hope they have a car there. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. On a phone, so we can call a cab. So. Oh, uh, Zimitsi are famously technologically savvy. Yeah. Hmm. So you start walking down this uh, shitty dirt road through a swamp. Uh, <laughs> there, bow, bow, are, bow, 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 there are bugs <laughs> everywhere. Like, everywhere. Blood sucking bugs. Oh, yeah. They're like mosquitoes. Mass bugs. Basically, like crawling all over you. Oh boy. And uh, so lose a blood point. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> oh no. And uh, as you continue way up ahead, you eventually like the overbrush starts growing over the road, but eventually you do find a gate uh blocking your way. Is it locked? 
Um, it does have a padlock on it, yes, although you could try and circumvent it pretty easily. Is there a communication system here or something? Uh, yeah, it's, no. right it's really just blocking the road. It's meant to kind of stop vehicle traffic, but on oh, foot... Oh, like we could literally just walk around Yeah, it. on foot you can get around would, it. Would we need to step into the swamp to go around it? Um, you would probably get kind of dirty doing it, yeah. Can That's we climb over? I mean, how tall is it? Um, pretty tall. You could climb over it pretty easily. Uh, it's fine. Listen, mate, the last time you were in waist deep water, you nearly got eaten. Let's not, let's yeah, not do that again. Was that? What are the Yours. chances of finding an alligator out in the Evergate? Well, I guess pretty good, yeah. Yeah, actually, <laughs> pretty goddamn high. <laughs> uh, We're in their natural habitat place. now. Let's climb yeah. up then. Oh, that's, 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 these uh, that's these alligators won't be like buffed by meth, though. Right. No, this is, <laughs> this is not meth gator country, no. Give me uh, strength plus athletics those. checks. Well... Oh, athletics. Uh, all right. Um, so dexterity and athletics, presumably, yeah. Strength plus strength athletics. athletics. Oh, strength plus athletics. For me, that's, that's two. Five. Could you perhaps give me a boost? I can if I get over the thing. Yeah. Oh, what was yours? Five. All right. Yes, you both managed to get yourselves uh, over. All right. All right. Um, just continue down the road, I suppose. Yep. So you guys continue walking down the road, and you can see there is, like, sometimes through the distance, like, the trees just sort of part as, like, wind blows them aside. You can see way in the distance, there does seem to be a large, like, manor house of some kind. Um, but then, a moment later, the brush will cover it uh, again. So you kind of know the direction you're going. Well, let's head there. All right. And uh, as you start walking that direction, uh, Zima, you start to feel a little bit uh, unwell, almost. Like, uh, it might be just, you wouldn't think it would be the heat getting to you, but it feels like kind of like you're overheating. If you were human, like you have some sort of heat stroke or something, maybe, because you start to feel, like, nauseous and dizzy. Oh, boy. Uh, Yuri, are you uh, are you feeling okay? So give me so first off, perfectly fine. Give me first off a uh, stamina, just a straight stamina plus or fortitude if you have it. Plus, uh, sorry. Stamina uh, plus fortitude if you have it. Okay. Uh, let me just really quickly find the fortitude. Where would fortitude be? Uh, it's a discipline. Oh right. Um. No. Uh, four. All right. All right. So as you're looking around, you can see that there are mosquitoes, but like big mosquitoes, like quarter or like, uh, you know, like coin-sized mosquitoes crawling on you. Oh, that's uh, not good. And like sucking into your veins. And, How uh, many? Is this enough to, like... Uh, like your arms are crawling with them. Oh, boy. So, I'm gonna need now a courage check. Uh, four. Alright. Uh, you don't go into frenzy, but you feel a strong desire to get these things off you as quickly as possible. Is there a, Are we just past the wall, or is there a tree nearby? Uh, um, you're... Uh, you're a ways past the, uh the wall at this point. Um, there are trees and stuff nearby, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll start kind of smash, or like not smashing my arm through a tree, but like I try rubbing it against a tree to crush as many of them as possible. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, you start like just swiping them off, smashing them against a tree. Uh, and then as they start to finish, you do start to feel better. You have lost one blood point that they have sucked out of you, but you've lost no, uh, taken no other damage. So far. Okay. But I'm fine so far. And looking around, well, that's what we're coming to. Looking around, oh. you no longer see Yuri around anywhere. Oh. <laughs> huh? Oh, no. Yuri? I kind of call out for him. Uh, yes, you have. Yuri has vanished completely. Oh, my. Whew. Can I see anything out of the ordinary? 
no, there's pretty much the road you're on, and then there's dense swamp off to either side. You can see, um, do you have some sort of light source? Not that I'm aware of, no. Alright, well then you can't really see shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is the road going off the way you came from, the way you're heading towards, and then there is dense swamp to either side. I would not recommend going into the swamp, because it's pretty much a death sentence without any sort of light source. Yeah, no, I figured. Um, uh, he can take care of himself, I hope. I'll start wandering towards the house again. Alright. So you continue on your travels. Meanwhile, Yuri. <laughs> yep. uh, you were just walking along with Zima when all of a sudden you felt kind of weird... Um, and then the next thing you know, you're just waking up in a different place. It's oh, like the time oh just vanished. You have no explanation for how you move from one place to the other, but now, instead of being in the swamp, you're in some sort of dirty room. So this feels, like, can, this feels like King Crimson on Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you're waking up right now on like a sofa in some sort of dirty-looking sitting room. Uh, it's very dark. Uh, you can barely make out any features, uh, even with your acute senses. Um, but this, yeah, it looks like a sitting room. There's, like, some pictures on the wall. There's, like, a television, which looks broken. Um, it looks like basically an abandoned house that someone has left for a few years. Huh. I appear to be alone. Yeah, as far as you can tell. Um... There is one door out of the room, which is closed. Other than that, um, there's also a fireplace as well, which is unlit. Hello? There is no response. I will search the room. All right. Uh, give me a perception plus investigation. That is eight. That's almost KGB good. <laughs> so looking around, you can see in the dust, it's kind of strange, but there is basically one set of footprints coming from the door to this couch. Um, and measuring them up with your feet, it looks like you walked in here by yourself of your own volition, although you have no memory of it whatsoever. Oh, that's oh. oh I know what that is. <laughs> oh, oh, what? <laughs> Uh, looking around, you can see that there are paintings of, it looks like a family of some kind. Although the paintings are, or the, the pictures are, like, really damaged, like they've been left out in a swamp. <clears throat> um, but you can Imagine basically that. see what looks like, uh, you know, a mother, father, and then kids. Um, and none of them look particularly friendly, although it could just be the result of the environment you're in and the decay. Yeah. That makes you think that. I'll make a... I'll make a mental note of what they look like, all the people there. And then, because you did really well on this roll, you also notice that one of the back walls is hollow. Like, as you're tapping on it, it seems like there's something behind it. Oh, I'll see if I can find a way to get in there, then. All right. Yeah, you look around, and eventually you're able to find, like, a latch. And then the uh, tiny little door swings open. It's like a little, like, child-sized door you'd have to get down on all fours to crawl through. Well, that won't be a problem, then. Thankfully, I'm a very skinny guy. <laughs> I love how the actual door out is in no way somewhere we want to go. We're going to go through the little dwarf door here. Absolutely. All right. So you climb through into this tiny little room. Um, and inside, the walls look like they're uh, possibly like padded with something. And then, as you're crawling around, it's basically pitch black in here. And then you put your hand down and you like knock into something. It seems like there's a pile of sticks of some kind. You can't really see what they are, but there's a pile of what feels Ooh, like sticks. I feel like I might know where they are. Well, you can always bring them back to the other room where it's a little bit lighter and examine um, if you wanted. Can I just feel around a bit and make like guess that they are probably bones? Uh, well, that would be uh, a strong possibility, yes. 
Is there anything else in here? Or otherwise, I will make my way up now. Uh, well, you would have to actually feel through all the bones to see if there's anything buried underneath them. If you want to take the time to do that, you certainly can. I'm not in a hurry. All right. Go ahead. So, yeah, you sit through all of them. Give me uh, a perception plus alertness. Eight. All right. I unfortunately don't have a cute sense of touch, but... All right. Yeah, so you start uh, sifting through the bones, and you notice that some of them do kind of feel weird. First off, give me an intelligence plus medicine. That's a two. I've had a three, actually. Wow. Oh, okay. why, why, why do I have medicine? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You do kind of suspect that some of these bones look... They're smaller than, like, human bones. So it could be either animals or possibly children. But they are smallish bones. So probably the tenants, then. Yeah, could be. Um, and then, as, yeah, as you're feeling around, there's also something underneath all the bones. And then, in triumph, you pull free uh, what looks like a big-ass axe. It, like, for cut-chopping firewood, possibly. Neat. I have a weapon now, I can't use it, but I have it. Oh yeah, mentioning weapons, you did have a weapon on you before, but as you kind of check your pockets, you find that uh, the gun that you bought does not seem to be on you. I was going to ask, and I've assumed as much. Oof. <laughs> well, is there anything else in this, like, haul-out wall, or will I, re I will return to the room now? Yeah, it seems like this is pretty much it. Just a little bone storage corridor. Gotcha. Again, I'll, I'll check before I head back in the room that nobody has entered it while I've gone. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anyone in there. Okay, I'll head back in. All right. So, through the main door? Yep. All right. So you... But again, check check through, like, the keyhole first. Like, listen to the door. All anything. Right. Stick your face right up against the keyhole. Look through. All right. Well, you don't see anyone uh, immediately present, although you do... It's hard to tell because it's so dark, but you do feel like there was some sort of movement as you first uh, approach the keyhole. But you don't actually see any figures. One moment. So it could just be like the wind blowing. It's definitely not the wind blowing. <laughs> Only just the winds. I, I can handle this. All right. What is, did, did I hear anything? Like, did I hear something shuffle about? Um, yeah, you did hear, like, some sort of brushing sound. Again, it could have been wind that you heard, but it did feel like something gently grazing along the floor. Actually, hold on, I forgot to do something. I'll go and use my, um, power to look at patterns at the mm -hmm. bones. Well, the thing is, is that because you can't really see too well, it's hard to tell if there are any patterns in the bones. So you don't really oh, notice anything. If you could carry them out someplace with light, then you could definitely examine them. You really want me to do that, so I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's fine, then. I will, I'll consider it for later, but not for now. Okay. So, through the main door, then. All right, yeah, so you open up the door, and you find you're in, like, a corridor. Um, to one end, you can see that people have just, like, piled shit up against one of the, uh ways you could go. Um, just blocking the path with debris, essentially. Right. But the other way, you can see that there is a passage leading off uh, to one side, and then a the corridor keeps going on as well. Gotcha. Let's check out that uh, place where it goes off to first. Okay. So that heads into uh, a big kitchen area. Which, uh, again, this house is disused, so you can imagine how it smells. It looks like food has been let out, uh, left out to rot for some time. Does the food strike me as particularly odd, like perhaps human flesh? Uh, it could be. At this point, it's been rotting for, like, months, so it is impossible to tell one way or another. Okay. Hmm. Anything else that strikes my, um, not, not strikes my fancy, but stands out <laughs> to me here? Uh, you look through, there does seem to be, uh, there is like a little pantry cupboard, uh, which does have some like canned food, which might still be good, <laughs> if you 
wanted to give it to someone to eat for some reason. Um, and it bears like normal labels that you would see on like food. Okay. Um, besides that, there's like some like kitchen appliances and stuff, but they're all destroyed. Um, there is a door which looks like it should be like be the back door leading out of the house. Um, although it does seem to be uh, locked. Good thing I have an axe then, but I'll I'll say I'll do that later. <laughs> All right. Um, one Let's odd see. thing is that you notice the lock. It has a keyhole on this side, on the inside. Oh, that's the, really distressing. That's a really bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I tab against the wall, do I hear anything from the other side? Uh, like the the exterior wall. I mean, tap against like the door with the log yeah, on. Yeah, the it. door. Um, yeah, it sounds like a solid door. Um, a lot of this place is kind of like run down, and um, like the walls are kind of falling apart. But this door seems like it was built very solid, and it's still holding up. You know, I forgot something. Let's obfuscate. Thank you. <laughs> Good idea. It just now struck me. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Okay, now we'll go explore the rest of the corridor. We'll right. maybe come back here and check about that door. So you head down to the end of the passage, and there are... Uh, give me first off a perception plus alertness. Eight. All right, you're just about to pass by it when you notice that there is something hanging from the ceiling along the corridor. There's like a, a rope basically for a pull-down staircase. Besides okay. that, you also notice that the hall basically ends at a set of stairs which go down. Let's check out upstairs first, so All we right. can clear off the way when pulling the rope. Yeah, so you pull down that down and it slides out, and uh, upstairs it looks like there's some sort of attic uh, mostly used for uh, storage of something. You see, like, just box, cardboard boxes filled with things. Um, some of them bear labels. Um, Such but, as? Yeah, reading through the one nearest you is labeled Christmas ornaments. And then uh, there's another one just labeled knickknacks. And then there's just more like that. And uh, it stretches off, and then at the very end, there's a tiny little circular window which lets in light from outside. I'll take a look through the window. Right. Window. God damn my W's again. Approaching the window, you can see that it seems like the moonlight is positioned in such a way that it's directed straight through into the place. Um, it's kind of eerie, the way it's positioned. But other than that, uh, you don't notice too much odd about it. However, very near the window, you can see that someone has, like, a telescope uh, set, um, which is disassembled in one of the boxes. Hmm. Anything odd about it, or...? Um, no, not really. It looks like a just sort of child's telescope set. It doesn't look particularly expensive. Um, it does look quite old. Um, How quickly could I put this thing back together and take a look through it? Well, it depends on your role. Um, but even assuming you do very well, it would probably take like 20 minutes or maybe half an hour. Let's not then. All right. So let's go uh, the end of the corridor, head down. All right. So as you head down. Very, very cautiously, very stealthily, because I'm not yeah. feeling too hot about this. So you're trying to be quiet, which is a real problem when you put a foot down and hear a splosh as you step into the water. Um, Let's not go down there. It seems like a flooded basement, yeah. Let's, let's not. Let's not go down there. All right. One second thought. Carefully so step let's back go. up. Yep. All right. And let's go to the um, locked door in the kitchen and start busting that down. Okay. So you uh, go up to it. You got your axe ready. So give me a strength plus melee. That's a one. <laughs> so, wow. We're going to be here a while, I think. Wow. Funk. 
uh, you make basically no progress on this thing. It basically bounces off. If you mm. want to keep hacking at it, you can. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> I, don't think it's gonna, I don't think much is going to change unless I spend a lot of blood on this. Yeah. Can I use my um, pattern recognition in here? Um, there is there is like a small window uh, for the light, so yes, there is enough in here that you could you can see fairly okay. Let's try that then. All right, so you gonna pull, bring the bones out into the kitchen? No. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to try and uh, pattern recognize then? Just if anything in here seems wrong, outside the bones, obviously. Yeah, you look around, um, it all seems, well, none of it seems right, obviously, but it all seems to kind of fit the, uh, the overall abandoned house theme. Nothing really stands out to you. Hmm. Could I get out through the window? Um, the window is very small. You might be able to squeeze your way through, but it's also just as likely you're going to get about halfway and get stuck. Hmm. I'm trying to think, is there anything else in here that I haven't looked at yet? Just the basement? There's the basement. Right, if I guess I'll try to the basement then. Alright, so you head over to the basement, step inside and start to slosh through the water. Before that, I'll, I'll find just some random piece of rubble and toss it into the water to make some noise if there's any reaction at all. Okay. There's no reaction. Okay. My ears are perked. Alright. So you slosh down and it comes up above your waist and you start walking through this. Um, and downstairs, uh, you're looking around and it does seem uh, a little bit mazy down here, although it might just be like an open area where you can't see very far. But as you're wandering around, eventually you hit an angle where you can see a flicker of some sort of light ahead of you. It's not huh. directly in front of the staircase. You're basically kind of walking, looking around, and as you turn your head one way, you can see perhaps through like a doorway or a hallway, some light flickering. Gotcha. Hmm. I'll, I'll try heading that way. By the way, my footsteps, did they lead this way? Um, yeah, your footsteps. What's weird about the footsteps is that the dusty footsteps that you saw in the room, there is yeah. no footsteps whatsoever that were on the other side of that door. Huh. And it's not like there's no dust or anything. It's more like so many people have gone through that that way is like basically free of dust. There's no discrete footsteps. So possibly multiple people had been through there. Huh. Well, let's head to the light for now. Or it could be that wind blowing the dust away, too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's head to the, um, the light now. All right. So you start sloshing through, and eventually you can see that it's definitely some sort of candlelight. Um, and it leads you into what looks like a small sort of underground bathroom. Um, or half bathroom. It's just a toilet and a uh, sink. But uh, in the sink, you can find uh, there is your gun just sitting there. For your order? Yeah, it looks like it. I'll take it. All right. And uh, needless to say, you're basically drenched here in the water. Uh, you were completely dry when you woke up. Huh. And as you're pondering that, you hear splashing back the way you came. Hide. <laughs> Hide. Sensible. <laughs> so you just want to like basically back up against the wall and obfuscate. Is that the plan? Um, is there something I can take cover off that's not like in this very room? Not really. And needless to say, wherever you move, I mean, you splash in the water. Yeah, I'll I'll hide in here, just up against the wall. <laughs> All right. Just gun at the ready. Gun, is the gun loaded? Uh, yeah, you check it. It does seem to be as you left it. Okay. <laughs> so, gun in one hand, fire axe in the other. Dual wield. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
So, uh, yeah, you hear splashing around, and it seems to come, like, right through the hallway in front of you, and then it goes off around. It seems like it's doing just sort of a general circuit of the basement. Oh, God, this is the amnesia water monster, isn't it? No, that thing wouldn't know where I am. It doesn't so It just inherently knows. Uh, I, I, I am innately familiar with that monster. <laughs> so I'll wait for it to leave, hopefully. All right. Yeah, as you're kind of waiting for it, there's never a point where you can't hear it. But it does seem to just be going in circles around the basement. Just so constantly? You can... You can kind of map out, sort of based on what you're hearing, a sort of idea of the basement. You could try and guess when it's at its farthest point, but it's never out of earshot. Oh, boy. Do I... Can I hear anything specific about it? Like, is it, it seems to be very tall, multiple um, legs, anything? It seems anything? big, yeah. Anything? It seems very large. Like, larger than probably you are. Can I ever manage to get, like, a sneak peek at it? Um, yes, if you want to try. Uh, you have acute perception sense, as I recall. Yeah, acute sense sight, yeah. acute sense hearing. Give me, uh... <laughs> give me just a straight perception. Fine, specialty in people. Alright. Well, this isn't a person, so the specialty doesn't apply. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> That, all, that already gave me some information I wanted. That's, um, that's a good. All right. Good. You mm. absolutely uh, strain your eyes against this thing. And um, what you notice is that you see the water press as something huge is moving through it. But you don't actually see anything there. You can only see the ripples that it's making in the water. Oh, no. Good thing I have courage five, eh, lads? <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's, it just keeps walking. Yes. If you had to guess, you might think it was looking for something. Like, maybe it suspects that you're here. Well, I can't quite run away from it now, can I? I mean, I'm trapped can. here. There's well, no, no I'm trapped here. Yeah. yeah. I can't sneak by you because of the fucking water. Is there perhaps another exit from here that I haven't found? Uh, so you can uh, look around. Give me, a, <laughs> give me a wits plus alertness. That's five. All right. Well, you do know that. I mean, sometimes there will be like windows in. Uh, basement so you start kind of like or in like bathroom so you start looking around find any kind of like ventilation um and you do see there is a tiny little passage up near the roof of the room that you might be able to squeeze through if you're lucky although you could easily like i said get stuck in it i think that may be my best option for now all right let's go for it first off I assume you're moving sneakily. Absolutely. Give me a dexterity plus stealth to see how little you disturb the water. I'm also not uh, taking the fire ash with me anymore. I feel like that's going to be a problem. All right. <laughs> dexterity, stealth. That's four, and I'm using a willpower point. All right. Gingerly as you can, you get on to the toilet, and then you climb up it and out of the water. And then you reach up and you kind of like push things away. And it seems like there is a little ventilation window that basically goes into a small area that was dug out of the swamp. But the swamp has since kind of filled it in. You may be able to push your way through. As you kind of move some of the muck aside, you can see uh, like starlight outside. Okay. Well, let's do that then. Slowly, steadily, All right. quietly. Just Quite a quick dexterity plus athletics, then. <laughs> no. <laughs> Slowly. 
Dex, oh, do, you actually need, do you actually need a Dex Athletics? Yep, Dex plus Athletics. Four. You're trying to basically man mangle yourself through this thing, which is smaller than you are. And will PowerPoint. All right. I don't want to. Oh, so now it's okay. So yeah, you get you get your head through, and you got your arms up there trying to pull yourself up. Uh. And you're kind of getting there, you're wiggling your way up, when all of a sudden, you hear the worst thing you could possibly imagine. As you're forcing yourself up, you knock over, like, the porcelain <laughs> lid on the toilet, and it splashes into the water with the worst sound in the world. There's a moment of sheer panic... And then out, you hear out, 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 where out, it's out, completely out, out. quiet. And then you hear splash, 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 splash coming directly towards you. Out, out. <laughs> you force yourself up and you start like scrambling. Uh, you are nearly free when all of a sudden you feel something on your last leg as you're getting out. Grab a hold of it and start trying to push you back down. So out, now give, out, out. Give me a uh, strength, uh, just a straight strength to try and free yourself. Okay, I'll use a blood point, so that's two, and the willpower point. Okay. And you rolled a ten on your one die. You Thank fuck. yank wow. yourself free and scramble backwards and. For a moment, obviously, worried that whatever it is is going to come up out after you. But you hear, like, a rumbling, gurgling sound. And then you feel whatever it is just descend back down into the okay. house. By the way, you said one die. Did you run? Did you roll one, one die? Oh, that's true. You had one more, didn't you? Never mind. I'm, I'm fine. No, it's fine. Don't, don't. It's fine. I'll take, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take it. Okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he survived. Why'd you say anything else? Because I think I got my blood point back. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright. So, uh, where am I now? Um, yeah, so you're looking around, uh, and like a chill wind is blowing here. So since you're drenched in water, uh, it's pretty cold. Uh, it looks like you're in the middle of the swamp. Uh, there's a house here. Uh, it looks very similar yeah. to the at least general area you were in before, but you have no idea how you got here. Okay, from where I saw the house before, can I go to that angle and head back that way? Like uh, you can try and just sort of, yeah, guess your way there. Give me a wits plus survival. Uh, two. Alright. Okay, so you start trying to guess your way back to the house, and now we will move over to Yuri. Well, not, not, not back to, to the house. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Zima. Yes? Following Yuri's vanishing, uh, what do you do? I head, to, I head towards the house. All right. Um, just, I, I, I figure, ah, shit. Not much I can do with no light source in the middle of a swamp. All right. Besides, follow the road. So, you continue uh, along your way until uh, eventually you can see uh, the house itself. Um, and it's a big, actually, like, mansion, although it appears to be falling into pieces. Mm -hmm. um, uh, can, are... I, can I walk... Like, is there any, like, any obstructions, or can I just walk right up to the front door? Um, there is, like, a sort of white picket fence, which has basically fallen over. Uh, in places, it's been replaced by, like, corrugated metal. Um, but it's only up to, like, waist height, so it's pretty easy to climb over. You do yeah. see what looks like a few electric lights burning inside. So it does seem like the place is inhabited. Uh, I'll knock on the door. I'll walk up and knock on the door, I think. All right. Give me a second. I need to get my water. All righty. All right, so you approach, knock on the door, and uh, as you do so, you immediately hear the sound of dogs barking on the other end, 
And then you hear a voice uh, yell for them to be quiet. And then the door opens, and a mousy little girl looks up at you. Oh, hello. Good afternoon. I'm. I tell me, do you happen to know if uh, if anyone lives here by the name of? Uh, did he? Did was I given a name or anything? Uh, you were told to look for the cold dune. The cold dune. You wouldn't happen to know a uh, cold dune, would you? Uh, her eyes kind of get wide when you say that. Um, and then she, uh, opens the door more for you to come in and waits, and as soon as you're on the other end, she will close the door behind you. Uh. Yeah, sure, yeah, I'll walk in. <laughs> All right. Seriously, should I, should I ask to, for the Kuldoon to come to the front door? No, that seems to impose. All right. <laughs> So, uh, she silently leads you through, and you see just a weird group of people as you're passing through this place. Um, there's a weird-looking, elongated man, um, who's sitting in one room playing a cello. Uh, and then okay. there's also, like, what looks to be, uh, some sort of more animalish-looking man who's just, like, tearing into a hunk of meat. Can I, like, wave in a friendly manner to these people as I am passing them by? Um, they're pretty much ignoring you, focused on whatever else they're doing. Okay. Well, I tried. And, uh, eventually, uh, you are taken into a small room, uh, where a man is sitting in a cross-legged position at the center of what looks to be some sort of ritual chamber. There's, like, incense burning and things like that. And there are uh, occultish markings on the walls. When you um, enter, he stands and looks at you expectantly. Uh, very quickly, did I do? Did I get a name for the last guy, the last Zimitsi I had to talk to? Uh, yes, it was the priest Aya. Aya. Good evening, friend. Uh, a man named Aya sent me to see you. He uh, gave me this missive. Had right. the letter out to. Him. So he will take uh, the parchment from you and read it, and then nod and say, uh, remove your shirt, please. All right. Um, take my so shirt off. He kind of starts to look you over, and then uh, just kind of casually, as he's examining you, he says, uh, do you know anything about uh, the madman stalking our property? The madman? What do you uh, do, 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 do elaborate? Well, I presumed he came with you. There is some sort of lunatic wandering around our grounds. Do you have a physical description? I was with a friend when I came here, but uh, he does not sound like the type to stalk fine folk like yourself. Uh, I was not informed of any physical description. Right now, the others are handling it. I see. Any, any information? You say you did bring a friend with you. I did. Uh, if you do find someone wandering the swamps, I would be most appreciative if you could bring him in alive. Hmm. I suppose I can relay that to them. Thank you very much, Fred. Alright, so he seems to finish his initial examination. He watched it, walks over to a strange stone with glyphs carved on it, which he presses against his temple, and then sets it down, and begins making notes. And uh, as you are getting examined, uh, Yuri, you're just kind of wandering around. You're pretty sure you got lost. When all of a sudden you are knocked completely off your feet <laughs> to the ground by a huge ass dog, which begins barking in your face. It Mass dog. <laughs> it approached completely silently. And then you find silently. yourself being surrounded by large men. Okay, remain quiet, just say nothing, still. 
They're all armed, and one of them seems like he's about to take aim at you when all of a sudden he kind of like looks upwards expectantly and then says, oh, I understand. And then he turns down towards you and says, follow me. I don't suppose I have much of an option here, do I? The dog backs off of you. Right, well, I, I follow him. All right. And he starts to lead you in a completely different direction from the one you were going. Oh. <laughs> and says, bad, huh? uh, <laughs> you were lucky. I wouldn't, it doesn't make sense to go messing around in the guest house. In the what house? The guest house. Ah. Oh, so that's what I was. Hmm. <laughs> Next time, don't invade people's property without asking. I don't recall doing that. It's quite strange. That doesn't mean you didn't do it. I'm aware of that. Though I am quite curious as to how I got in. Well, I mean, it's easy enough to get in. <laughs> We're really just Not lucky that one of us happened to see the door and lock it again. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm following him, so where right. are we going? <laughs> so he takes you into the big house. Uh, he leads you basically along the same path that Zima took, uh, past the same weird people, and eventually brings you uh, into the ritual chamber where Zima is waiting for you. Yuri! Oh, where the hell did you go, my friend? I have no idea. Apparently <laughs> I went to the guest house. I see. How on earth did you wind up in the guest house? I woke up there. Oh, very strange. Quite. We should ask the uh, Kuldun about that when you when he's finished with the whatever it is he's doing. I would certainly appreciate that. Yeah, All right. No problem. He says you shouldn't go into the guest house, as he returns his attention to the two of you from his notes. Nice. He's bringing with him a small necklace-looking talisman which he uh, approaches and asks you to hold, Zima. This is a fine necklace. It looks like a talisman. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll ask him, uh, what is this? He says, hold it in your mangled hand. Then mm -hmm. I'll grab it. All right. Uh, from there, he goes over to a uh, large vat, which he brings over towards you. And he opens it up, and inside you can see that there are uh, several organs, as well as several other bits of human bodies, um, and some animal bodies as well, presumably, in this big bag. He eventually pulls out a roll of something, which he basically starts winding around your arm. And uh, as you're looking at it, you realize that it is uh, skin that he's winding on here. Jesus. Says, well... I suppose I am not to ask how you acquired this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you can guess how we acquired it. Uh, I don't know you. The myths seem to have a way of acquiring more versions of uh, organic material. You don't mm -hmm. necessarily need to kill people, but that's not always such a good thing, you know? See, Your friend you is not the house. only one who's wandered into the guest house. Ah. See, Matt, you ought not ask questions you do not wish to hear the answer to. Yes. Yeah, good point, Yuri. Speaking of questions, do, do, do you not have one for this man? How exactly did I wind up in the guest house? I can only presume you decided to walk inside, although why, I am not certain. Well, I woke up there. A sign on the door clearly is labeled, No Trespassers. I am saying I woke up there. Well, I wouldn't have gone to sleep in there. No, I, I think what he means is... There. I was walking, then I woke up in there. Yes, <clears throat> he, uh, when I said he came in with me, I did not recall him ever leaving. He simply vanished. I see. And you have a certain, shall I say, propensity for the ability to vanish. Is that not so? Outside of obfuscate, I believe this is the first time it has happened. Mm. 
but you do have the ability to escape notice then. I do have obfuscate. All right. He seems very pleased. Uh, he says, ah, well, that's the root of it then. You vanished because you obfuscated yourself. That is why Yuri could not find you. You went into the guest house because you're insane. Makes sense, yeah. I don't believe I can convince you otherwise, so sure, go with that. Well, you don't need to convince me. It makes no difference to me whether you're mad or not, although you certainly are. <laughs> well, well, he has his moments, but... Uh... I don't know. This is most unlike him, and I have known him for a, a, a good time. Not forever, but, you know, uh, I feel this is something that would have come up already. Mm. Have you ever had any other blackouts before? Any Out moments character, you can't I? remember in your life? Out of character, have I? Well, you have amnesia. Not, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so no, 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 not the amnesia, but yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> well... I do have amnesia. Ah. I do not recall anything past the last... How long have we been together, Seema? Uh, I believe it was f uh, about half a year, for a couple of months. Yeah, around that. Yes, so approximately, I would assume, I look at myself, 22 years, something like that. Mm. And of course, however much time is a vampire on top of that. Yes. So really, this is no surprise at all. It seems well, as though it was your time sane that was the abnormality. I suppose I cannot argue with that. Mm. Sounds well, like well, this is all true, but he does remember most of this, and that is certainly new. Well, maybe, maybe not. Tell me, do you think you could uh, give him a quick once-over, just to, you know... I, your friend would like me to examine his brain directly. I can certainly do so. I don't know about directly. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that is all I can offer. I'm not a uh, psychologist. I see. I appreciate the offer, but I think I will refuse. Well, it's certainly your business. As I said, it makes no difference to me if you're a madman or not. However, I would not recommend, as I said once more going into the guest house again. Very well. Thank you very much for your time. With that, he's basically finished winding up the skin around you. He says, now, this talisman is very important. You should not allow anyone to see it. Therefore, I recommend putting it someplace where no one will find it. I can assist you with that if you wish. This is going inside me, isn't it? Well, I find there's one very easy place to hide things. Oh, boy. Where would you recommend, sir? Well, he kind of looks you over, and then he selects a spot uh, right around where your liver would be. And he will open up a small incision with vicissitude, as long as you don't resist. Very well. I'll, and then I'll let him do his thing. He will reach a hand inside... Uh, pull out your liver, set it, put ow, it back ow, into ow. the vat, take the talisman, and then set it inside, and then seal you back up. Ow! It actually okay. doesn't really hurt that much. With vicissitude, it basically... Also, like... I can lower, I can lower his, uh... I don't think you quite had the time. Yeah, oh. he's, it doesn't hurt at all, because basically, he's not really cutting anything, he's just parting your flesh Opening. like it was supposed to be parted. Okay. Fair enough. It's basically um, just like working with Play-Doh. Fair enough. Um, yeah, no, in that case, I will... I'll ask him, so, this talisman, what exactly does it do? Uh, it should prevent anyone noticing you the way we have noticed you. You mean regarding the arm? Hmm. Hopefully no one will realize anything happened. Although I suggest you avoid anyone interested in the occult. Mages, Tremere, that sort of thing. Yes, well, they've been doing that already, short of, you know, seeking Do yourself out. Do not allow a Tremere to know you have the talisman. Tell no one of it. You understand? I understand completely. All right. 
Thank you very much for your hospitality, friend. Hmm. Kind of uh, looks at you and says, uh, you are very welcome. Before I go, you wouldn't happen to have a phone here, would you? We need a taxi. Ah, you are stranded here, I see. Well, I can uh, arrange uh, for you to be brought back into the city, if that is what you wish. And it would be most appreciated. All right. So he uh, summons one of the men who caught Yuri and uh, speaks to him in a language you can't understand. Uh, it does sound actually sort of Slavic, but it is not Russian. So presumably Polish? it might be uh, Romanian or something like that. Uh, I speak Russian and Polish, so if it's either of those. Yeah, it is neither of those. You would okay. suspect uh, probably like Romanian or possibly like Ukrainian or something like that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the man then nods. And motions for you guys to follow him. I, I believe we've no reason not to do so. All right, takes you guys to a beat up old pickup truck, which he starts up, and uh, he will take you guys back into the city. All right. Uh, I suppose we'll get in the back and head off. All right. So I'll just lean over and ask, Yuri, what exactly happened to you? I did. You just woke up in the guest house and. Uh... Is that all you remember? I truly remember nothing else except for waking up there. Did anything happen in the guest house? Or? Uh, I found bones. Oh. Which is presumably where they got their um, equipment from. And I was chased by some rather large creature that I could not quite get a glimpse of, and I, I'm quite happy with that, honestly. Very well. Maybe they keep the family pet there, you know. Right. That is entirely possible. I suppose. Right. Uh, I should We're also going mention. Back to Team KGB back in one town. Thing, one thing before that, though, that I want to mention to him. Um, I had somehow lost my gun, and I found it in a rather improbable place. I, I am yeah, exactly. At the end of a long corridor filled with water. <laughs> I was completely dry when I woke up, so I don't know how it could possibly have ended up there. That is strange. Uh, well, Quite. Well, well, they went off into the fucking Everglades to think of Amici. Of course, they ran to Things to think about later. You were in the city talking to a artist. You're saying it's our choices. It's the choices you make. We're making different choices. I think I think we we're done. Different outcomes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they made the monster choice. You made the painting choice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys, <laughs> Team KGB, gets back to your home base with the painting. First off, where are you going to? Well, that's hang the it. question. Where are we going? To <laughs> and of this bullshit with the invisible guest house monster. Put it in the two people's room. I actually wanted the painting. Yeah. Right. So you don't want it in the in in the oh. area where you sleep? No. Here's the question I for you know. guys. Well, now that you're, I don't know if the painting signals that you're more okay with Mina, but are you at some point going to take the samovar into your room? Well, I mean, I suppose we could. You guys, it just seems like, like I drink tea. I don't know. I just thought it might be polite. Since you guys turned out, it started out as kind of anti-Mina, but now you're getting a picture of her. <laughs> I thought maybe you would think it would be polite to have her gift to you. Well, yes. If, if it's polite, then yes. Obviously, In your room. We'll take the samovar. Um, and, and put the... And we'll hang the picture over the samovar. <laughs> <laughs> Create a little shrine. And we'll have a little shrine to Mina. <laughs> All right. Sure, why not? If you ever do invite her to your room, Make sure to keep get rid of the painting. It's kind of <laughs> creepy. I don't know, David. How would you feel if you went over to a friend's house and they had a painting of you there? I'd be pretty happy, but I, I would leave. No, I think she would be scared. <laughs> that Tito has, you know, painted her, and it's it's like in Seinfeld, the one with the, yeah. the Kramer's portrait. I yeah. mean, obviously, it's disturbing and yet beautiful. <laughs> of course you want it above your 
fireplace. And then we should, we actually should invite Mina over for some tea with the samovar That's true. underneath the painting, I believe. Yeah. Okay, noted. That'll be on my list of things to do. So as you guys are hanging up the painting, getting settled, uh, Corduroy comes in, uh, and first off, he has uh, a package with the stuff you ordered. He has a shotgun and a handgun inside of it, which he hands over to you guys. He says, don't ask where these came from. Uh, don't let any cops check them. Both of which we have. Uh. <laughs> he then says, uh, I also have this, and he puts down a newspaper, and you can see that he has circled on it a uh, location where there's an office uh, for rent. All right. Very nice. So, it says, uh, it says that it is coming uh, fully furnished, which is why he noticed it. Um, the price seems low, but you will have to go and check it out. He said he made an appointment for you guys to go down and speak with him. Well, he really wants to kick us out. <laughs> Probably. I mean, you asked him to do this for you. Yeah, he's being helpful. So, thank you very much, Corduroy. That was very kind of you. He just gave you a gun. Been extremely helpful. All right. So, uh... You guys are all going to the office. I don't know. Yes, I, I would assume that we would. Alexei may want to stay back and jerk off to the painting. I was, that's true. No. <laughs> I can't be I'm left alone with that. Because I'm the only one who wasn't controlled. <laughs> so is everyone going to the office then? Yeah. All right. I assume so. Yeah, how much longer yeah, is uh, Yes, I w assumed that I was leading Stalworth out the door again. Yeah. To All right. Go to his office. Zach, how much longer is left? Um, probably not that much longer. Grant, because I'm gonna pass out soon. Okay. <laughs> so maybe Alexi does stay. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, yeah, you guys head down to the office, and uh, as you arrive there, you can see there's sort of a harried-looking uh, guy. He looks like an accountant. Uh, yeah. Who greets you at the door um, and invites you in, shows you around the place. There is a fax machine. There is, like, typewriters. There's desks and things. There's basically a main office where you're... And then there's a front sort of secretary office area, but it's basically a two-room office. Um, it's in not really a nice part of town. You're a little ways off the beach. Um, but there are, like, bars on the door. Or off bars on the windows, rather. Um, like I said, it's pretty much coming kitted out with all the office stuff you could need, uh, except for a computer which uh, he's the guy casually mentioned he doesn't trust. <laughs> but there is a slide rule. Okay. Nice. Filing cabinets, I'm assuming. Yeah. All of that good stuff. All right. So how much a month is it? Um, well, he wants you to basically just buy out uh, his... Least, so he wants basically all pretty much all the money you have, but you'll have it for like uh, the rest of the year, okay. basically. And where are we now? Are we in like December? Kind of <laughs> no, okay. you'll have it for like several months. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll leave it up to Stallworth. Do you like the place, honey? Well, I mean, it seemed nice. And you said it's going to be all our money. Um, yes. He has, he has $9,900 because $9, we already spent 100 on a painting. <laughs> <laughs> and you bought guns. And we have guns. So. It seems like this guy is kind of in a rush because he's leaving. Like, this is all his stuff, too. Mm -hmm. And he obviously had to pay it for a while. And he's okay, leaving. which tells me there's somebody after him. So, why are you, uh, well, we should probably ask that. Is this all on the up and up? This? Yeah, yes. let's, let's definitely ask him that. Is, is, are you, 
running from something? <laughs> my KGB. I'm preparing to enter onto a new phase of my life. And uh, I'm happy to send you guys off on a new phase of your life in this office. Is anyone going to come looking for you? They do tell them that, you, that I have sold it to you and that you don't know where I went. All right. <laughs> so it's up to you. This could be a good way to meet the seedy people that you're constantly friends with. Yeah, we, we, maybe, that's true. Maybe looking for Make some contacts. <laughs> I'm up for First it. case, <laughs> find the guy who sold this office. I will help I'm, you find him. I'm going to be 100% honest. Like, when I was listening to him say that, uh, that if he went missing, nobody would come looking for him, I was thinking... What if we bought it from them and just, like, killed them and took the money back? <laughs> well, you could do that as well. Um, but that might call attention to us. Well, what if he came across as a, an accident? <laughs> um, we'll uh, see. But I, I like it. Though. There's always an option. You can always there's, kill someone there's later. There's always an option. Um... Possibly, I'd try and keep our nose a little clean, just until we get, you know, hired to kill him. Yeah, if we're hired to kill him, maybe. But you know, um, just yeah, I just feel we're new in the city. <laughs> you don't want to start murdering people. We don't. We don't want to start off in the wrong. We don't want to call too much attention to ourselves. We don't know. True. We don't know who's after this guy. Maybe yeah, they want him for information, not just. That. <laughs> You know, we could be sticking our, our our fingers into something we don't want to get involved in. That is true. Yeah, let's let's take the place. All right. So you guys, so, darling, I admire your uh, ambition, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe let's not. Kill so you guys put down your down payment. All right. And uh, this is pretty much the end of the first storyline. You guys got your arm taken care of. You got a new place. Um, so we are going to be picking up uh, probably like a few years in the future next time the next story comes up. Mm -hmm. We're moving from the mid 80s to the late 80s. To the late 80s. Woohoo! So, first off, uh, who was the one that role playing award last time? Uh, Mace, I think. Yeah, right. it was me. So you can give your first vote for this. Um. Uh... I would say Jake. All right, Jake. Uh, I'll go with Mace. Uh, well, oh, I can't because I won last time. Oh, all right, of course, of course. Sorry. Uh, let me see. Uh -huh. I liked um. Oh no, let me just check my. My name's Mary. Mm-hmm. So give me a second to uh. Get her. Yeah, she was thirsty for that painting. Yeah. Mary, who's your vote? Um, Pick one. <laughs> Mary votes for David. All right. David? I vote for Star Wars. All right, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, Star Wars, you have to vote for uh, Miles. Well, you can't. You can't vote for Miles. You can't. Oh shit, the chain is broken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I vote for uh, I, I vote for Boxy. Alright. Thank you. So you get five, everyone else gets four experience points. Besides right. that, uh, in order to uh, kind of account for the time lapsed, uh, everyone gets 15 freebie points to distribute as well. 15. Wow. Distribute freebie points uh, just on skills, or you can spend it on backgrounds. Anything that you want your character to have been doing to get backgrounds during your time off, spend freebie points on it. So are we getting 15 free points that we can spend now and we stockpiled however much we stockpiled? Yeah, you got or... your ex experience points and freebie points are separate. Uh, the freebie points... Okay. Yeah, the costs are different. Yeah. So very quickly, freebie points, how am I uh, spending these? Is it like, if say I wanted to make my charisma up to three from two, would I need to spend three points to do yeah, that? Yeah, I'm going to so, go to sleep while you have that conversation. Right? Yeah. See, okay. Okay. See you, man. See you, man. See you, man. See you, man.
Uh, there's a whole like chart for preview points. The preview points are what you spent during character creation. Yeah, um, same here. So okay. I think Miles can probably uh, explain. I can, I can walk you through it. Yeah. All right. Cool. cool, cool. Um, and then you've also got however many experience points. Uh, plus, we're at the end of a story, so you get three additional experience experience points on top of everything else, and you can spend okay. all of those as well. Sorry. So we uh, so we we're just we're, are we so we're done with the story. Yes. Okay. Um. So that's so we're spending every. Yeah. So you go ahead. Go ahead. So we're spending every. So all the XP we've got, we can spend. It's, nothing's being stockpiled. Um, you can stockpile XP if you don't want to spend all of your experience points. You can keep them as experience points. The freebie points, you do have to spend all of them. Okay. Okay. And, the, and it's spent same as how it was in character creation, or the freebie points are spent differently. Yeah, I XP think experience. Miles can probably explain that to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't suppose we can buy merits, can we? Um, if it's a merit that makes sense for you to get it that you didn't have it already, then yes, but for most merits, no. Okay. So I, I, I really wanted to get that uh, huge size merit, though. Yeah, well, that is an... Um, you could get it if <laughs> you wanted to say that you uh, owe a boon to a Zamitsi on top of everything else, then yes, you could get huge size. I think I'm going to be hilarious with just... You need to show up be like two feet taller next time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to get body modified by Zamitsu, you can. Yeah, I, I don't think I will. All right. <laughs> I think I'm good. Besides that, since we're at the end of the story on, like I said, there's going to be a basically a hiatus for a while um, before the next story, but I'll let you guys know when that will be coming up. Yeah, that's all right. So don't feel in a rush to you... spend your points. You can take your time. I feel like you'll probably be pleased to know this, but I do plan on getting Auspix. Good. <laughs> ah, yes, my brother in Auspix. <laughs> uh, the best mm. discipline. Mm. Indubitably. It is, unfortunately, an extremely good discipline, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so useful. Yeah, you know what? I hate it. Fuck it. <laughs> oh well well I will catch y'all at some later date yeah alright man I'll see you later see you around see y'all see you guys later right so do you want me to walk you through the uh, expenditure process yes